This is no ordinary hunting knife. With a plasma core of 20,000 volts, it cuts, it shocks, and it burns. Very few video games leave a generational impact as great as the Halo franchise. It's full of action, adventure, and super futuristic technology. And one piece of tech in particular, in particular, whew, has always captivated me. It captivates everybody. And I'm speaking, of course, of the energy sword. It had an aggressively unique shape, and as the name infers, its blades were engulfed in plasma. It's some wicked sci-fi design, though it may not be entirely sci-fi. And the fact that this sword has haunted me everywhere I go, it's begging to be birthed into reality. So, after blending copious amounts of 3D design, printing, CNC machining, circuit design, and high voltage, plus the assistance of one of my subscribers, I found promise in a small-scale solution which I'd like to call the FS Blade. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I can't even tell you how many times I've thought, man, I'd love to build an energy sword. But then reality hits me in the nipple and I realize, ugh, it's a hyper difficult design. Firstly, with the handle being the only connection point, the entire design would tend towards fragility. It has no support. Second, the high voltage power source could only be placed in this area, which lacks internal space. So taking the general concept and morphing it into something immediately feasible was my first task. As I do, hitting up one of my favorite cafes and slurping down bean water fired up my neurons. I started sketching and settled on a hunting knife style blade that would support having a core of plasma. With a handle slightly longer than normal, it could fit in a small lipo battery, high voltage power source, and even a fan. In order for this to work, I was going to need the right high voltage power source. It needed to be small enough to fit into a handle and still leave room for a battery, produce AC, and provide enough current to fill the entire length of the blade with plasma. Now, designing and building that myself would not be an easy task. So after extensive digging, I found a really compact high voltage board which produced over 10 kilovolts. I excitedly ordered a few of those, and then started searching for a suitable PC fan to help propagate the plasma down the blade. I ordered a pair of 35mm fans, hoping they'd do the job. The last item needed was a small enough 3S LiPo battery. Uh, so before I could do any real work on the handle or the electronics, I first had to model up the blades and get them cut. So that's where I started. I drew inspiration from the same hunting knife topology and quickly sketched them up in on shape. However, I don't have a CNC and needed precision cuts. Shooting a quick message to my subscribers, I asked if anyone local to me had access to a CNC or laser cutter. I immediately received a message from Vitali, who offered up his shop. So the next day I took a quick drive over to his place, which was only one city over, and met the legend himself. That's a really big CNC machine and it's in his garage. Way to go, Vitali. After some mild adjustments to my blade design, we got right to work shaping the stainless steel I brought. Turns out the stainless steel I selected wasn't a match for his CNC bit. Feel good about this? After planing down a fresh piece of steel, we gave it a second go with a new bit, and machining went really smoothly. Uh -uh. Until this point. We simply had too much heat buildup, so another bit for the box of shame. Eventually, we settled on machining aluminum instead, which cut like absolute butter. We'd do steel later. Taking them home, I gave them a rough sanding to clean up the edges, followed by a fine sanding to bring out an edge. With that, both blades were finished. Each has an inner edge as well as an outer edge, and that's for a reason I'll talk about later. Around this time, my supplies started to arrive. This included the high voltage boards. They were way more compact than I realized, and I was really impressed. These high voltage supplies looked incredible, but I wanted to know, how do they perform? <sighs> Dear God, they perform. All right, let's see it. Oh, that is really impressive. This was more than enough current to start the spacing tests for the blades. So this test is going to be really important because it's going to tell me if there's enough current to make a Jacob's Ladder. And if there is, it also means there's going to be enough current for this entire blade to work when there's forced air. Attaching one high voltage lead to each blade, I started with a 10 millimeter gap and gave it power. Predictions are that 10 mil will be too much of a gap. Let's see. Yeah. Next, I dropped it to eight millimeters, hoping to see ignition. 
Uh, not quite. Dropping the gap to six mils, I felt pretty confident. Maybe this one? Yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm going for. This gave me enough material and information to start designing the knife handle around. So I got straight to work 3D modeling the handle and all the other components. Per usual, I used Onshape, and the process went really smoothly. Two mounting bolts for each blade, a fan compartment with shroud to focus airflow in between the blades, and a cylindrical handle with room for the battery and high voltage board. I always use Onshape because it's really easy to work with. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can try it for free. This is the forced air component. It's a critical piece, holding the handle, fan, and blades together while providing airflow. Let's see what this little fan can do. Uh, not much flow. <laughs> Maybe this will work? I then slid the electronics into the handle, which was designed to draw air past the electronics for cooling. You can see the intake vents on the back. Finally, both blades popped right into their designed spaces, and with the addition of two bolts each, were locked in place. And with that, this blade is pretty much complete. Mmm, sexy, look at that. As you saw, the electronics are all housed within the handle, and there's an on-off switch right here on the back. Now, the stability of these blades was a concern of mine. I wasn't too certain about this connection point, but this is, I mean, the structural stability on this is actually quite nice. I'm really impressed. Um, this is the spine that is supposed to fill with plasma if it works as intended. So let's test it. Here goes nothing. Oh, it wants to work. I mean, the arc is trying to start at the base like it's supposed to, but it's, it's got too much incentive at the top. <sighs> so back to the drawing board for round two. I went through several modifications from decreasing the blade spacing, narrowing the air passageway, adding structural stability, and increasing the dimensions of the handle and the shroud to accept a larger fan. Sending these to my printer, I felt pretty confident that these modifications would help a lot. While I waited, Vitaly and I had a third go at machining these blades into steel, and this time, <laughs> no sparks. I now had two steel blades, sharpened and ready for plasma. Other changes included using an even smaller 3S LiPo and upping the fan from 30 to 35 mils. With my print done, the second FS blade iteration could be assembled. A bit of work later and the second version is complete. I really like the proportions on this one better because the handle is shorter, the fan is wider in diameter so it kind of looks like a hilt. And also the blades are actually made of steel, so they'll last. I'm feeling pretty good about this. The fan is bigger, the blades are closer together, and everything's more compact. Let's do this. Oh! <laughs> I have a little bit of an issue of it forming an arc at the end, but essentially it, it works. It's a little underpowered, but I think I can fix that. These boards come with one transformer attached. Adding a second transformer allows for double voltage. Space was already tight, so I designed an electronics insert to maximize all remaining space and to insulate everything from the insane voltages this would produce. Wiring the transformers in series parallel configuration allowed for that double voltage. Sliding this insert into the handle was oddly satisfying. Nice, clean, compact. With the addition of an even larger fan and both blades, the third iteration of the FS blade was ready for conquest. All right, this is the final form. You can see it's fully assembled, and in terms of ergonomics, it fits really nicely in my hand. Let's talk stats. The FS blade weighs in at 340 grams, measures 35 centimeters in length, consumes 80 watts of power, producing 20 kilovolt plasma. Okay, look, this has taken over a month of design and redesign and <laughs> way more design than what I've showed on camera. But I have a great feeling this time. Oh! <laughs> God damn it, it works. Oh.
So that's 20 kV being blown down the length of the blades. In the dark, the plasma really pops. Undulating in colors of purple and yellow, these striations are just absolutely beautiful. Whether you're looking at them from the side or straight down the barrel, this plasma means business. It sounds a bit like a jet turbine, but that's a plasma blade. <laughs> Whew, I'm so glad I got this working. I have legit dreamed of something like this, a plasma blade, for years. And let's not forget this is plasma at STP we're talking about, which is composed of ionized air molecules sitting at thousands of degrees. That makes it good for other things too. Such as a lighter for those romantic high voltage nights, and for keeping those unruly houseplants in check. <laughs> That'll teach them. But this is a plasma knife we're talking about. It has a knife's edge, so is it useful for cooking? Obviously. And when you're done being a general menace to the world, it plugs right back in for a quick charge. So it cuts, it burns, and electrocutes with 20,000 volts AC all at the same time. Ah, oh, the power of ionized air molecules and forced convection. Hmm, family friendly. Now, if any of these acronyms or concepts seem, I don't know, a bit foreign to you, no sweat, seriously, because there's a super simple way to learn a lot more about them, and that's through this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant's a really fun and interactive platform with thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics and new lessons added every month. It's the best way to learn math and geometry, physics and mechanics, and computer science to name a few. Their simulation courses are actually really fun. The content itself is fully customized to whatever your skill level is at at the time, so it basically fits your needs and lets you learn at your own pace, which is a huge plus. For example, in the Polarizing Lenses course, you can explore how rotating a polarized lens affects light output, and if you choose the wrong answer, it explains the correct one. Brilliant's platform helps you master concepts like this in as little as 15 minutes a day, whether that's on your desktop, tablet, or phone. Visit brilliant.org slash plasma channel or click the link in the description down below to try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days. And the first 200 get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now let's talk next steps and how to turn this whole plasma blade topography into an energy sword. Building this into a sword topology presents some really serious challenges, primarily because of super limited space. I mean, I'm going to need at least three, four times the voltage and way more power. So here's my thoughts on it, keeping in mind they might change on the day. It may be best to house the battery and control circuitry in the handle. Then those wires could head out to the blades where high voltage transformers and powerful fans sit. Air would blow from vents right here and this can act as an initiation point just like the FS blade. Not impossible, but one hell of a challenge, honestly. Now, I'd like to know, I didn't build this knife as a weapon, I built it as more of a functional art piece and because I thought the idea was beautiful and pushed boundaries. Plus, since it's successful, it kind of shows that the sword idea might be right around the corner. Drop your thoughts in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for future updates. Shout out to Alan Pan who had a similar idea five years ago. Go check out his video because his version makes way more plasma. I call this the FS blade for a specific scientific reason. If you think you know the reason, let me know in the comments down below. And I learned so much while building this, hopefully you enjoyed the video just as much. Vitaly, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your generosity and thank you guys for watching. You stay classy.